I took part in Lurumdar 48 together with a team of 7 very talented people. This was my 18th time participating in the Game Jam Lurumdar, which is a game making competition. The game you make needs to be created in under 72 hours and follow a specific theme. This time around, that was deeper and deeper. Early in the first morning, I got this concept image from our artist Bell. The idea was to make an arcade shooter, where you play as a demon sent to hell. But not just any hell, 80s themed disco hell. As you wreak havoc, you get sent deeper and deeper into hell and face off against more and more enemies. Once everyone else is dead, the mullet rocking devil decides to deal with you himself. But the game didn't make itself. I started out with creating the player character, making it possible to move him around and added some basic boundaries. Then I experimented with different sizes for the room. We wanted something which was bigger than the window size, yet not so big that traveling from one side to another would take too long. Once we had a size which was suitable, I moved on to the weapon. Since this is a shooter, it's important that the weapons feel satisfying to use. Gun variety for the player was another priority. To save time and avoid having to animate each gun, we decided to animate the player character separate from the weapons, and handle the gun movements with code. I spent a couple of hours tweaking the look and feel of the gun. One example is that I tied it to a sine wave to make it bob up and down. Now what is a gun without the ability to shoot? Yeah, that seems balanced. I then spent some more time making sure that the bullets spawned at the correct place before moving on to the most important aspect of the game. The player character has a cigarette. It absolutely needed a particle effect. Yeah, that seems bad. Next I started to work on the shadows. In order to be able to see them, I flipped the background color to white. So now I can't see anything. I also added a small kickback to the weapon when you shoot, to make it more juicy. We wanted the game to be fast paced and action packed, so it was clear that we needed some kind of mobility, and settled on a dodge roll. This would not only allow you to reposition yourself quickly, but would also make you invulnerable for a brief moment. Now that the controls felt good, it was time to add the first enemy. I equipped it with two guns and made sure that it kept aiming at the player. It was around this time that I started to lose consciousness after programming for over 15 hours and decided that it was time to sleep. I made the enemy able to shoot and take damage. To further juice up the shooting I added some empty shells which pop out to accommodate shots. Next we added my favorite enemy, Flying Mullet Man. Look at his glorious mullet. And then some other enemies. We wanted a system where the player is only able to use a weapon for a limited time, to encourage the player to experience all of the guns. It's important in a game jam that you do not make content which the player does not get to see. We had this problem in a previous Lurumdar game, The Drown, where players were encouraged by the system to upgrade a single weapon and miss the rest. To avoid this issue, we made each weapon have a limited amount of bullets. To make it feel better when you run out of bullets, I came up with the idea of having the player toss his weapon when he runs out of ammo. This weapon would then serve as a kind of grenade, exploding on impact. I accidentally created something that looks like DNA, and while that's cool, it needed to be removed ASAP, or else I would just sit here and watch the fancy patterns all day. After sorting that out, it was time to make the enemies drop their weapons on death, which the player can pick up and use. Now that we had the system for the weapons, it was time to create some more of them. I spent a fair amount of time tweaking the different guns, trying to make them feel interesting and different from each other. All of a sudden, the entire day had passed and it was time for me to go and die. What? I'm dead, huh? Well, not even death can hold me back! It's time to- Code. Some Code. <laughs> it was now the third and final day. We needed to get the core gameplay loop up and running as early as possible so that we could playtest as early as possible. I started working on the level system, which triggered the level swap after the player killed a certain amount of enemies. To drive home the point of having the player fall deeper and deeper, 
as was the theme of this game jam, I created a black hole which appears below the player, making him literally fall deeper. With the levels in place and working, it was time to add in the assets for them. This was a huge morale boost, since the game finally started to feel more like a game than a tech demo. We also added a CRT effect, which curved the screen slightly, along with scan lines and a bit of visual noise to give the game that 80s feel and look that we were going for. To further increase the disco levels, we made the floors blink. You can also see some of the work-in-progress cutscenes that Eric, our other programmer, was working on. The idea was to add a couple of characters, the devil and his advocate, who would discuss what to do with you after each level. The purpose of this was to give the player a small break and add some more comedy to the game. Since shooting demons is the core gameplay loop, it needed to feel really satisfying. To further increase the overall juice, I set all of the player's bullets to cycle through colors in the air, and added a particle effect explosion upon impact, which was set to the current color of the bullet. Finally, I made the enemies splash into small pieces when they died, accompanied by a bloody particle effect. Time was starting to run out, and while Eric started adding all of the great sound effects, voice lines and music that our team had created, I concentrated on the final boss and his throne. This along with the ending is something that I do not wish to spoil, so if you think that this looks interesting, there is a link down below where you can download and give the game a go. I had a blast working on this, and while there are things that did not make it in due to the time constraints, I am super happy with how it turned out. Huge shout out to the amazing people on the team. Bell, who made more assets than should be humanly possible. Eric, who programmed so many cool things, like the menu, intro sequence and the ending, just to name a few. Ben, who wrote the script for the voice actors and voiced the advocate, and who happens to be the editor for all of the videos on this channel. Daniel, who made all of the funky music which pumped up the disco of the game to dangerously funky levels. Ian, who joined us for the first time and delivered fantastic sound effects. Zach, who perfectly voiced the radical 80s disco devil. And last but not least, Frankie, who did such a great job at voicing the player character. If you have the chance to participate in a game jam, I would highly recommend it. It is one of the best ways to improve and you always learn something new. I plan on making a video which covers some of the tips and tricks which I have picked up throughout my years of participating in different game jams. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that or any of the other content which is on the way.